What's up design family and welcome to another episode of Fit Design TV. On today's episode, we'll be looking at fabric dyeing. What are the different methods? What are the pros and cons of each? As a sportswear designer, we're always looking to get awesome colors into our products and our designs. So how do we go about deciding on which dye method is the most suitable for a specific design or a specific collection? Watch this video and you're gonna find out. Welcome to Fit Design TV. On this channel, we'll explore what it takes to make it as an active wear fashion brand, whilst providing tips, tricks, and actionable steps towards starting your own product line. Whether you're an entrepreneur looking to start your own brand or just someone interested in fitness fashion, there's something for you here. In order to understand color, we have to understand what dyeing is. And in order to understand dyeing, we have to understand how fabrics are made. So the fabrics that cover our bodies that make garments those are made out of sub, let's just say particles, you could say. You have the fabric piece, which is made out of knitted or woven yarns. And then the yarns are made out of fibers that are twisted together to make these yarns. So the different dyeing methods typically have to relate to at which stage in the fabric production process you introduce color or pigment to the fibers, yarns, or fabrics or even the cut and sewn garment. We'll start off first by the most primitive or the most foundational method, which is fiber dyeing. This method is in which the fibers are dyed before being spun into the yarns. So it's done at the first possible stage. Why this method is awesome is you get the most amount of evenness of the color because you're literally baking the color into the DNA of the fabric and you get the most evenness and the richness of the color. What are the cons? This method is extremely risky for mills or suppliers because of the high fashion risk. It has to be done so far in advance that you commit to dyeing X quantity of fibers that you can't use for any other method or any other application besides creating that specific color. So you have to be sure of which color that you're gonna go for. For blacks and whites, that's fine, but if you're going for seasonal or trendy colors, you're gonna end up regretting that when in 24 months or even less, 12 months, the color palette has completely changed. So that's where yarn dyeing, or sorry, fiber dyeing can be quite risky. The next method that we're gonna look at is a offshoot of yarn dyeing, and this is solution dyeing. It's very similar in that the color is now also baked into the fibers themselves, but this type of method is only suitable on synthetic fibers. We've done a video about synthetic and natural fibers, and we highly recommend you check it out, but all you have to know is synthetic fibers are man-made. It's like nylon, acetate, polyester. Solution dyeing is basically taking a chemical solution and forcing that chemical solution into the fibers when they're being spun into the yarns. So you're literally baking the fibers with color, similar to fiber dyeing method. But the fiber dyeing method is applicable to both your cottons or your natural fibers and your synthetic fibers. With solution dyeing, one of the major pluses here is obviously you're getting an evenness of color, you're getting a resistant color, a vibrant color that's not gonna fade out over time. It works great on synthetic fibers, but you also do get a limitation in the types of colors or the palette of colors that you can put because it requires specialized chemicals to do so. There's also a limitation on the spectrum of colors. Next, we'll look at yarn dyeing. So after we've made our fibers into yarns, we spun them on the spinneret into yarns, we now have the yarns. Before we weave them or we knit them into fabrics, we can dye that yarn. This is kind of like in the middle of dyeing the finished fabric and dyeing the fibers. It gives a good blend of both. Because you are closer to the final production date, it's less risk in terms of committing to certain colors or committing to certain trendy colors, but you also do get that evenness, that richness of color, that durability, and you just get an overall nice blend of having the flexibility and at the same time having the ability to create a piece of fabric that is really well dyed that's going to be durable. 
this method is really really commonly used in let's just say for painting or for um, on garments that have like plaid patterns or stripes or any other multicolored pattern that is going to require for the yarns themselves to be dyed before being knitted or woven into the fabric. The next and most common type of dyeing is piece or fabric dyeing. This is exactly what it sounds like. Once you've taken your yarns and you've either knitted or woven them, and again, we've done a video on knitting versus weaving, highly recommend you check it out. But once you've woven these fabrics or you've knitted these fabrics, you'll take that stock piece of fabric and you'll dye it in a vat or in a tub and you'll dye it according to your specific Pantone or your specific color reference. And this method is very commonly used just because it's quite flexible in terms of not waiting too far ahead of time before dyeing and then not waiting too long before having to dye. And you get a rich color, an even color, but because this is already applied onto fabrics that are woven or knitted, what happens is if you have a very tightly woven fabric where the structure is insanely, it's not porous and the spaces between the yarns are not as large, you end up having the pigment having a difficulty to seep into these areas and to cover all the ground that it needs to cover. So you end up with an issue in that case. And what we typically recommend uh, to do in this case is to be conscious about the specific fabrics that you're going to use. If you're going to use a woven fabric that you know for a fact is not porous at all, you don't want to be picking a piece dyed woven fabric. But it does give you an opportunity to have a wide range of colors and a good blend of economics and a richness and a durability to your colors. The last or the most final stage in which we typically see dyeing is called garment dyeing. And garment dyeing is once the fabric has been cut up, it's been sewn into the finished garment, that's when you would end up dyeing it. And why this method is very popular amongst retailers, especially in fast fashion, is because it's super non-committal. You can wait until the final garment is done and then decide on the colors that you'd like. There is a limitation here in that there are only specific types of garments that would work, such as hosiery. You end up also with other types of uh, garments like hosiery, pantyhose, or even sweaters, stuff that are not going to have these tight knits. You're gonna be able to have a luxury to dye it once the garment is cut and sewn. You have a wide range of colors that you can choose. The spectrum is quite varied. You have a lot of flexibility in that case. You do sacrifice the vibrancy, the intensity of the color, the durability of the color. A lot of garments which you get that you see the color fading over time, especially sometimes uh, way faster than you'd like, typically those garments are going to be garment dyed. And you're gonna wanna avoid that for longevity. But you do get the added benefit of flexibility and just speed to market with a garment that is dyed on the spot versus having to dye ahead of time and to commit to that specific fabric. We also get an offshoot of this type of dyeing method which we call cross dyeing. So cross dyeing is again taking kind of like the finished fabric and you typically have two types of fibers in there. And it's a method of playing off of the ability or the difference between these different fibers to absorb different dyes. And what you end up happening is the fiber that's gonna absorb or the yarn that's gonna absorb more of this dye versus less of this dye is gonna end up allowing you to create a pattern. So a lot of heathered garments, uh, marled garments, will use that technique to create that shade and shadow effect or that speckle effect. It's also used in plaid, it's also used in a lot of different patterned pieces, whether it's gonna be a tonal pattern piece or it's gonna be a colored pattern piece, you're gonna be able to use the cross dyeing method to give your garment that textured look and to add intrigue to your garment at a stage in the fabric life that is, again, quite flexible. So you're not having to commit to this early on. Hopefully you guys have kept up. Hopefully you guys can see the difference and how it typically runs down the chain of 
fabric production. It just depends on uh, what stage you want to introduce the pigment. There are a ton of different topics surrounding kind of dyeing, different types of dyes. We'd love to share them with you guys. If that's something you're interested in, do leave it in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, smash the thumbs up, consider subscribing. It's always awesome to have you guys come back to these videos and even to new people that are just showing up. Hopefully you can find this content interesting. We're super passionate about manufacturing, production. And we love to share this type of content. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Fit Design TV. Until next time, stay awesome.